what we have created is a beautiful, beautiful roast, mashed potatoes and gravy and vegetables that are just to die for. They're so fragrant and so good. So please come and join me. I really wanna show you how to do this. I think you will love it and I think your family and friends would enjoy it so much. I would cook this just for me, just for me. So I'll meet you over in the kitchen, okay? Come on over, you'll like it. Hi, it's Grandma Roseanne and I'm understanding that you wanna learn how to make the best pot roast in the world and that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm going to start out with a three pound chuck roast. Chuck is the only one you can use, all right? Don't try any other roast. I will tell you I have failed on many of them. So Chuck does it. Now the reason it, look at that, doesn't that look gorgeous? The reason it does this is that it's got the correct amount of marbling through it. It's about a 70-30%, which is what you are looking for. Now to this, we are going to liberally salt it. And it is about one tablespoon per side. It feels like a lot of salt. And it is. Second side gets love too. And now we want to just scoop up what is left on our cutting board and get that into the meat. Now we're going to set this aside for 30 minutes. And what that is doing, it's infusing the salt. It will melt and it's going to permeate this meat, which will be so flavorful. So a half hour, it sits to the side. And while our meat is allowing to salt to integrate into it, we work with our vegetables. So I have three stalks of celery here that I cut kind of large. I have mushrooms, which I left again, pretty large. And I have three carrots. Now I have my cast iron skillet here, and I'm just adding a couple of tablespoons of oil. I'm gonna let that get very, very hot. Our oil is starting to smoke. So now we will put We're going to let this sear for five to six minutes undisturbed. Don't go messing around with it. Just leave it because as you do that, it fills a very flavorful crust on the beef. And just look at that. My goodness, you guys. That's perfection. Now be sure and press it down because you want that meat to touch all sides of that pan and leave it alone. I keep emphasizing that because I'm the one that wants to mess around and play with my food and stir it and mix it and uh, leave it alone. It's the hardest thing for me, just leave it alone. All right, we want another six minutes. Okay, I removed the pot roast and it's gonna just sit here for a while. We're gonna work with all of these beautiful vegetables that we have already dealt with. In my pan, I'm putting in three and a half tablespoons of butter. I love these Dutch ovens to cook with you guys. I think that they just are fantastic. And now we will incorporate all of our vegetables. The carrots. Those beautiful mushrooms, the celery, the onion, stir this up so everything gets a little bit of that butter, some salt, I don't know how much salt, um, I think I'm just going to use like a half a teaspoon of salt and <clears throat> half a teaspoon of pepper, a quarter, quarter teaspoon of pepper. 
Now we'll mix this up and we're just going to let this cook until those vegetables are starting to soften. Maybe five, 10 minutes. Okay, they have softened and reduced in size. Now I'm going to put in one tablespoon of garlic. I don't put it in in the beginning because I really want to be careful that this does not burn. Actually, I'm putting in one and a half tablespoons. And we're going to let that heat up a little bit. It only takes about 30 seconds for this garlic. As soon as you smell it, the aroma is there, that garlic is ready and you're good for the next, the next step. Now we're going to put in one and a half tablespoons of flour. This is going to be our thickening agent and we do want to cook that. So give that a couple of minutes. Now I'm going to add a half a cup of red wine. If you prefer not to cook with wine, that's fine. It just, the alcohol does burn off and you're left with the flavor and it's really delicious. One and a half tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. One tablespoon of better than bouillon beef base. I think it is a superb product. one and a half tablespoons of tomato paste, and one quart of bouillon. <clears throat> so I am still using the better than bouillon. Now, the way you use this concentrate, it's one teaspoon per cup. I want one quart, so I have got four teaspoons in here. I put just a little bit of water to mix it, and then I'm going to bring the rest of the water level up to four cups. Now that goes in, and how scrumptious is that? I'm getting all the fond off the bottom of this pot. I can feel it, there's still some in there. I love the color of this right now. That tomato paste gave it a beautiful color. And two bay leaves. Now I'm pushing my vegetables a little bit to the side here and I'm going to take the meat and return it. I'm trying to get the vegetables off of the bottom because I'm really wanting the roast to sit right on the bottom as much as possible. Oh, it smells so good. Now with my lid just tilted a little bit, I'm going to put it into a 275 degree oven for four hours. I don't know that it's gonna be done in four hours, but we're gonna test it and see how close we are. It can go seven or eight hours, but you're not doing anything. You know, you're not, what did this actually take us? Honestly, I think it took us about 30 minutes to do the whole thing, to sear it, to um, do the vegetables, and uh, 30 minutes is nothing. <clears throat> then the time in the oven is no big deal. No big deal. All right, so I will check back with you in about four hours and we'll see how far we have progressed. 275 degree oven. Give it a little bit of space in here. Don't put the lid on tight. Well, we have completed this unbelievably beautiful, beautiful chuck roast. I wish you could smell it. Oh my goodness. I'm going to bring this closer to you. I want you to look at the richness of that broth. It's gorgeous, you guys. Ready to plate, but I want you to know what I did at the end of the pot roast here. I thought the broth was a little bit loose, so I took eight ounces of water, one heaping tablespoon of flour, and I just mixed it up really, really well. Then I took some of the broth and I poured it in brought it up to temperature, and then very slowly started adding it back into the mixture here 
while it was on the stove top and while it was on like a medium high heat and it started thickening just ever so nicely and now it's got a little bit more structure to the gravy which i liked it would have been fine the other way i just liked it a little bit thicker so if you choose to do that and thicken your gravy up don't throw the flour in there put it in a glass some water add some hot liquid so you're bringing it up to temperature and then slowly incorporate it you'll have the, the thicker you'll have the broth that's maybe a little bit thicker you might enjoy more all right we have our potatoes all right we have our mashed potatoes we have our gravy we have our vegetables and we have this amazing beef that is just pulling apart just like this just pulling apart look at that is that magnificent the answer to that is yes we're going to take a little bit of taste of this and make sure that we have done it correctly and properly and that you know exactly what to do so you can recreate it I think the word for this is elegant. It's just elegant. And I know the carrots are gonna be as good too. They're so rich in flavor. Okay, I will leave ingredients below, which are very, very simple. I will leave the timing below, because you wanna be careful on that. You wanna be sure to give it enough time to create the tenderness that we're experiencing here. And please come back anytime, come back anytime that you'd like to visit with me. I love visiting with you, I really do. So come back, I'll leave directions, our ingredients below. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button and hit the bell so you'll know when we're coming back again. Thank you so much, you have a wonderful rest of your day. We are gonna go enjoy a fabulous dinner. Thank you, bye.